All right, so actually I was able to figure out the compute shaders in the end. The only issue that I have is that first uh, we have to set like the image size from before so we get these uh, sharp edges, right? That's the first issue. Uh, like, you know, we generate this image in a compute shader basically. And the second issue is that even though I used only the init of the compute shader, not the update, you know, like the fragment shader will run on each frame. But the idea behind doing the compute shader was to run it only once. You know, then get the height map, and that's that, we have the height map. But after some time, it actually gets slower, and I have no idea why. Like maybe we spawn too many images or something, but it becomes a bit laggy. So, that's not good, obviously, it's, uh, it's worse than doing it with the uh, uh, fragment shader. So, um, what I'm thinking is maybe we can try to use the compute shader for getting the buffer of the height map and then using the fragment shader to draw the map actually because yeah like, let me just uh, go back to the master branch and this is with the fragment shader and yeah, I mean, we can go over how I did the implementation, but so I think I need to change this to be pressed to have the same effect as in the compute shader one, but uh, yeah, like it. Clearly, it, it runs better in this one. But I mean, it still becomes a bit laggy after a while, but... Feel like you can do more terrain with this option and the lag uh, and yeah, I mean the you know the edges are not sharp right obviously it becomes laggy once you load in all of them Right, because it has to draw a lot of things. But with whatever you say. But like with the compute shader it's slow regardless of how much you zoom in. Like it's not an issue of, let's say, the GPU having to draw a lot of images, that's why it's laggy. No, it's, it starts to lag because of something else. It's already lagging. And even if I just zoom in, it's still laggy. And yeah, like the issue is there's really not really not that much to do. So 
yeah sure fair enough we can still go over how i did it i mean it's still pretty much the same thing that i did yesterday but changed a little bit so uh, we have this chunk compute plugin which we if we are gonna include in our code it's gonna enable running the the compute shader right that's the idea so we have this com chunk compute plugin and uh, sure implements plugin we add extract component on our chunk compute data and chunk compute data is gonna be storing the uh, texture and this is a handle to an image that will be used as a storage by the compute shader and it also has the coordinates of the chunk so the coordinates of the chunk will be in a 2d grid right like 0 0 1 1 1 2 and, and so on and this is going to be used for the simplex noise or pearly noise right then in the plugin implementation we have to call to this prepare bind group and prepare bind group will uh, you know create this um, actually let's say okay no we'll prepare the format of this uh, input of the shader right then we create our node uh, compute shader node which is going to be chunk node and we add it in the render graph then i, I made this uh, new new function for uh, chunk compute data so this um, basically this um, module is going to expose the plugin and chunk compute data so the idea is if any uh, let's say entity in the world has chunk compute data on it then it's gonna be uh, used in the computer like we are gonna call the compute shader for that entity so maybe one thing would be once we generate the texture we remove the component so that could also be an option right to so make it more efficient i don't know yet though so we'll see then yeah we have the the bind group for this thing and the prepare bind group is just gonna say something like okay you take the texture and uh, you take the handle to that texture but it's gonna be like these render assets so it's gonna be gpu images or something like that I saw that on the master branch of Bevy it uh, changed, like this is now called GPU images or s this thing is GPU images, yeah, yeah, but right now it's not important. Then we have this buffer and I think, yeah, it's pretty weird how it's so complicated to, like it's so easy to do the image, but so difficult to do like a simple number. So I created a buffer for the IVEC, then uh, you have to write in that buffer the chunk coordinates and then you can take the uniform right? and you put everything in a sequential bind group or whatever and this is the texture, this is the coordinates. So you send them in the, like this creates the bind group that I showed you here. Right, first texture and then the coordinates. And we assign that uh, bind group on the entity that we want to draw for. So on chunk compute data, right, we assign this binding. Then for the pipeline, we have two methods we have init and update in this shader we have the init and the update that's uh that's the main idea that's the important idea 
so we have to implement this from world function like that's just the way you have to do it we specify the path to the shader then we have to create the init and the update uh, like references and you know this is just documentation how you do it right and i guess the final step is to create our node right and the node i wasn't really sure i found like some tutorials which were similar to this uh, like trying to do the compute shader for a component not for a resource and all of them kind of use this query state here to be able to get all the chunks right and i use like a small filter here like if you have chunk component data and the bind group that's when we take like the entity and for the state i have a hash map from entity to this state and this is important because we want to know did we finish loading the shader are we in the init function or are we in the update right? this is what this means okay uh, creating a new chunk now is you know, again i have no idea what this does but uh, it initializes this uh, filter right empty hash map then we have the update we'll go over it later so then we need to implement a node for our chunk node and again this is like how you're supposed to do it and we have two functions update is optional it allows us to you know if we have a state like this then it's good because we can modify this thing in update and then we have to implement run which will actually run the shader so in update we try to find all entities that have chunk compute data and i'm not sure why but you know, i was just looking at tutorials and they all use this thing here even though we have chunks already and that was a bit mm, why would you do that but anyway like we call it once more basically and then we do update state so update state is just gonna do as i said if um, we look at the hash map if you are in uh, loading then we go to init and if you are in init we go to update and the yeah, update doesn't do anything so that's the idea and uh, you know if we don't have an entity in that hash map we just say that okay that entity is loading uh, and yeah, pretty simple then we have to do this update archetypes which again no idea i just saw it in a like examples and just used it it's like probably it does an update on this filter just in case it changes right and then in uh, in the run function we take some resources for example we'll need the gpu images right then we iterate all of the chunks right in the map and here i said that we look at the state of each uh, chunk and if it's loading then we don't do anything if it's update again don't do anything i thought that maybe this will help with the lag but uh, it's still the same thing so in here you know if it's in it then we do in it if it's update we do uh, update basically right and then i took so like this entity is going to be a chunk right so it should have compute data bind group and it should also have the chunk compute data so i wanted to take to have like the gpu images to be able to have the size 
of the image. Like there's the only reason. Maybe this is causing some lag. So we'll experiment to see what why is it lagging. Then we have this thing which I mean just creates a pass. We set the input variables of the pass and we set the either the init or the update as the thing that is gonna execute. And then we you know dispatch. And I mean I've tried with different numbers here like in dispatch with the work groups. So work group size of usually eight right with different work groups here like even if I use one oh, and uh, one let's just say not sure how I can get work group size in here like that would be nice maybe there is a way Right, so even if I do this, like I send everything in a one block, in one work group. It still becomes slow after a while, right? And it's like, why does it become slow? right because another thing if i go in main and i don't wait am i blind i don't see the oh it's the terrain plugin is it really terrain plugin Literally, I don't see it. Oh, it's yeah, in theory, plugin. Um, as I said, we add this chunk compute plugin. Right? So if I disable it in the run without chunk compute so without actually computing the the high map and everything it's actually f quite fast right, regardless of how many of this thing we add so clearly it's an issue with i mean obviously it's going to become slower So how can we, like saying that this size of the map, I mean, yeah, like some uh, lag is probably caused by how much we see at once. So that's normal, but It's not uh, weird to think that this might be like a normal map size. Even maybe this zoom level. So if it lags like this now, then it's pretty bad. But like, yeah, at, at least we you know we got the shade, the compute shader. Um, so, what can we do next, right? Like maybe one idea would be to, as I said, keep the compute shader just for the height map. Or 
uh, try to get like the some performance things running. Because I mean I saw that you know it's it starts to lag. Let's say we don't add the chunk plugin. Let's say we let's say we don't create an image. We don't create this handler. We just create a default. Well, I guess let. Let's create like a default material and we don't add this thing. So we just create like a plane, right? A plane with nothing. So Although, you know, this is going to generate, ooh, I don't think, like we still need this thing, but the handler, can we have like an empty handler or something? Otherwise, we do something like this. I guess. Ah, but how do we get the? Uh, gives me the asset ID image. So we can say image is that get handler that one. Come on, handle image. Oh, it's option. Let's unwrap it, but it's still with what. Dude, come on. Oh no. I just need a handle.
super strong okay so we can do something like weak This is really interesting. Oh, this is clearly some rust crap. Okay, so I mean, this should, you know, if you have one, it keeps it, otherwise, it creates one image just so we have, uh, don't have to modify too much. So yeah, like if we don't use images I mean it still starts to be a bit laggy so let's say that Probably are they really holy shit? Are they really ten thousand? Yeah, it looks like. So let's say that the lag makes sense in this case. to see if oh I deleted that didn't I hmm. like this one right what would happen if we use the same image in the compute shader I'm curious like will all the probably it, it shouldn't work right chunk compute data once we have the handler so say that the chunk compute data is used only Let's see some other things like maybe 
getting this resource is uh, causing some lag but you know, not the best way to do it should actually use some real like okay size should be u vector u32 mixing okay, anyway so if we run it like this without oh I think I uh, but it's still lagging I do here divide by 8 but in the shader huh I wonder what happened so this this change is fine doesn't matter but huh, this is weird looking weird but see how laggy it feels like it really starts to feel really laggy so I wouldn't want to remove junk compute data because that's added in the outside and junk compute data bind group is gonna be always added like it's just gonna be added But it's strange like the execution flow let's see like how this thing executes right so in here we are just gonna say that this is gonna run in render phase this is all that happens right with this plugin we are gonna run this thing in render and this thing is not that complicated in my opinion like it just goes through all the entities and uh, does this thing maybe does this okay like like how do we profile Tracy Is it really that easy? I mean, no. I would expect that from Rust. Oh, but I compiled with release. Eh, anyway. So, you know, 
ないぞでなあそううんObviously, I would think that compiling with a release mode is gonna improve a bit the performance, but it's like too much lag, like, like just terrain generation. That's not good. So, like, if we add some stuff until it becomes a bit laggy, okay, let's say like that, and we should have okay, we have trace JSON. Would the like are there maybe I don't know Tracy profiling tool? I'm not sure how to interpret everything. But I mean, I see that render system takes the most time, right? At least that's what I would think. How about here? Uh, like some parts of it obviously yeah paper windows lights probably I use bloom so it's also But you know, probably it's gonna be more interesting towards the end, right? When it was getting really laggy. I mean, I see only the you know render system.
Okay, can we zoom in? So I would say this is each frame, right? The render thread. So chunk node takes the most time I can see. Right, seven milliseconds. A run is pretty fast. So in this in this frame, let's see. But I don't know what chunk node means. I have this update which I guess comes from Bevin. See, it increased to 93 milliseconds. This chunk node looks like it takes the longest. But what does this mean? Because camera driver node like the render itself how can that happen This is like the render thread, right? But before being able to run chunk node, it should do like some update. check so like this update of a node when is it uh, executed Not sure I know, but maybe one way is okay. 
but why would you need to have this as mutable? Just because iterator does that. Pretty strange, I don't know why. But yeah, I'm, what I'm not sure is the second. I give this exact. Like, what does this mean, right? And when it's. Camera driver, run graph, the EGUI node or some stuff. So this would be like prepare bind group. Right. Like it should be pretty quick, I might say. No, it's, it's like that logic of if I don't see it in the frame graph, then it must be really quick. <laughs> yes. But I can this chunk node is what it takes the most time. Also, prepare bind group looks like it takes some time. which obviously slows down rendering, but this is like, what, 10 milliseconds, which if you think about it, you need like 16 milliseconds on a frame. So even prepare a bind group is a bit too long. Like, I really wonder why like it's As I said, all of this stuff needs to be done only once in the init. And so can we think of a way to initialize only and see if that helps? Let's say this is the chunk initialized, right? But I don't like the fact that we want to remove this thing. I don't like that. That might be the only way to do it to remove this component. So 
So my paper bind group obviously works for young compute data. Maybe we don't really really remove it, but we add another component initialized or something like that. Can we change that in in the module file? You no. Know, once we discover position, we create a compute image. We add a handler. We add material. Like I don't really want to remove this thing because it's it's gonna be used. So. That would be a bit weird. But like what's annoying is that you cannot call to a compute shader like you call to create image. To be honest, that's what I wanted to be able to do. Like just call to it like this. because I don't really need all of this stuff. Right, I don't need to add a chunk node, like an extra compute thing. Honestly, I just want to run the compute shader once and that's that right like to basically like we did the multi-threading for the old night generation I want to do the same thing but instead of running it on CPU run it on GPU Right, so can we have something like baby run once? Like maybe this compute. One shot compute. I mean, you know, like what they search, baby run compute shader once. You know, maybe we need it, but we don't know. One shot will configure your worker accordingly. Yeah, but 
but we need to use main and the issue the issue is zero dot twelve. Let's see some You know that kind of sucks, but maybe we can scrap some stuff from some ideas from here, you know. Because if it's not going to be maintained anymore, then no, it's not an issue, but if it was version 13, then maybe it would have been better, but I just want to see how you do the one shot computers. And then you call to execute. Right, like that's this would be really like what um, what we need, right? So the issue is, so it has functions like add uniform worker builder. So let's see if we, worker builder should have stuff like add uniform. So let's see if we do the same thing, right? Self buffers. a hash map. Give it a name, create buffer with data. I mean it looks like how we do it, right? So maybe it would be worth to try but like it's not gonna work If we try to add it in TD experiment cargo and what it's ten dot three. So let's see if it's Like maybe we are lucky. Just kidding. Because yeah, probably some stuff changed and obviously probably a lot of errors, right?
Boat and Kish. Always trying to use mm. Yeah, but we're so it's not gonna work, right? steal from that so it's doing like run mode and it's obviously it doesn't work so it's just like says the run mode compute worker is up compute worker so that also comes from this library and it should have like execute or execute right can take inspiration from this thing and at least like how to add uniforms right okay let's let's move that device same way to create buffer but is there really a function create buffer with data I haven't seen it it is buffer in descriptor can create this mutable thing and then we can write stuff to it and this should be like uh, we have i vector right and the uniform is chunk but it doesn't have a new the fuck it has like from it also has default maybe Oh, and doesn't have right now. Hmm. I 
Okay, I mean the only option then contents is maybe to do something like this. Interesting, does that still work? Yeah, I mean, it still works. But obviously the lag is still there. But at least, you know. It's interesting, I don't see anything related to, like it uses WGPU for everything, right? But I'm not even gonna say that, uh, you know, sure this thing takes a lot of time because there are a lot of chunk compute data entities. So maybe, you know, that's the main reason. thing I can think of is removing this thing once it's done so let's say but how can we do that this is just dispatches it Like how do we know? The identity is ready to be updated. So like maybe in here in prepare bind group. We just remove the chunk compute data. 
But Chunk sure, compute data is still needed. So then, fuck. No, I really, I really hate it. Like, if you cannot go past the terrain generation, like it's so slow, it's not gonna work with like any extra feature we add. Like it's pointless to continue without knowing how to do the regeneration. Like it seems like compute shaders are re completely useless in this thing. Right, like how can we use a compute shader? Only once and only to generate because even if the in the example so zero thirteen yeah is like the read back example, right? Where's the read? Oh it's it's only on main. Even with readback, they still executed every frame. Right, like that's what's weird. This will receive any data from the render world. This will send any data to the main world. So, what? I mean, I see the same thing. I guess it's the render world sender and main world receiver. Right, maybe th this is what we actually need to do. Have some kind of buffer that we receive in our main world, but even then it's a bit weird. And yeah, I think like probably the best way we can handle all of this thing is by just using WebGPU directly, like WGPU, instead of using it through Bevy, right? Like, I'm not sure, I don't see why it, you know, wouldn't work. Although, I mean, this is like I'm not sure how we're gonna make it work with Wasm and stuff like that, so maybe using it through Bevy is the right way, but No, just want to be able to run like once and that's it not necessarily run it on each frame right storage read right so i 
execute GPU. Okay. The what? can call directly to execute GPU instance of web GPU then some kind of adapter device descriptor then we do this kind of stuff device q and the numbers so like the buffer where we want to write i guess or what is numbers create shader module And this really looks like what we did. Doesn't look really different. So let's say maybe we want to need to change that much stuff. exactly what we need to do and inside of module let's do like no, let's, let's just try something let's not waste time chunk coordinate is gonna be an i vector like let's let's still keep that Cover. Let's do chunk chord, and let's pass in p. Right, and instead of chunk coordinate, right. So Okay, anyway. So now we have chunk this and chunk compute data. And my idea would be to run this only once or something like that. That's why we pass in the handler and p so this is like arguments of our uh, compute shader but you know it's it's kind of hard coded for now so chunk of compute data still keep 
everything so everything should still be working fine if we go into chunk the plugin compute plugin we have the data and we have this prepare bind group just called here so What if I say dot remove and remove will be like chunk compute oh, chunk compute data. Okay, so let's see if we remove this. Right. Okay, so it's not working anymore. And that's because we removed it, right? Okay, let's let's go here. So we have, you know, all of that stuff chunk compute data right whatever prepare bind group we remove it so from now on we cannot um, you know base our work on chunk compute data anymore so here it's fine because it's um, like the bind the group layout I guess right from world i mean chunk compute data just replaces chunk compute data with chunk compute data bind group i would say okay As per usual, we no longer need the update here. Let's do that. Let's remove the update. So we won't have an update. Right. We won't have an update. Here, we only care about with chunk compute data bind group. And this, let's say, it's done. Like loading, compute, and done. Let's say compute. Right. So we have chunk node, states, and whatnot. Create a new one update all right so if we try to add a new one okay let's let's try to this should be compute what the fuck compute okay so and i guess if you are in compute we should Huh, wait, wait one second. So init, and if you are in compute, you should automatically go into done. Or what? Hey, how can we specify that? So actually we don't even do anything for that. We just have loading and compute. If you are in compute, we don't do anything. Okay, anyway. So then.
well clearly would still be a good idea to serve that state insert entity chunk done right. and then in done we don't do anything so chunk node has the chunk buying groups and that's it right so we cannot have chunk compute data here you know what like why the fuck wouldn't i just say this and then sell the chunks but i cannot iterate Oh, I can. You know what? That's good. Oh, you know, like, for fuck's sake, compute. Now he's gonna complain. Can we do iter manual? example like this GPU readback right, which is gonna do like FM run and it's not even gonna do the update like we don't give a fuck about the update it just does pipeline cache get compute pipeline That's interesting. So, I mean, let's say we don't do any of this stuff, but we still need the reference to the chunks am i right like i don't think we need the chunk node state we might need chunk node because we need the chunks reference to all the buying groups am i right but we don't need a state like why is the update needed i guess it's not so then we get the cache pipeline the buying group and this is gonna be interesting the buying group comes from here but in this thing we can only keep entity i wasn't sure how to keep uh, this thing it's gonna complain and say oh it has to be like this but if i do like this I cannot do it static. Huh. Actually, I can. Actually, it looks like I can. But I'm pretty sure he's gonna complain in some other place. So let's, let's keep it entity for now. Because, you know, we can easily take this. So, for the pipeline, okay, you can say something like this, apparently, pipeline cache, although, what might be interesting is, 
should we do this if before the for loop or after the for loop? This is a good question. So let's call it pipeline. This is a chunk pipeline. Cache compute pipeline. Okay, whatever. So we have the pipeline. Right? And then we iterate all of the chunks. Oh, so yeah, yeah. I mean, I deleted that. We iterate. Oh, but this is interesting. We need an update to do the update archetypes. So we still need that uh, that update for updating the archetypes, right? Still need this. So yeah, now we can iterate over the chunks. We can easily take this stuff. We can no longer take the data though. And yeah, that means we can no longer take the size and stuff. So I don't remember what this this thing wants. So this returns get compute pipeline. Well, it is though, right? Get compute pipeline returns a compute pipeline. Huh. Oh, I don't even need to... Oh yeah, sure, I don't even need to do that. So it's like, set the bind group, set the input, set the pipeline, and uh, set the dispatch or group. I see. Let's say one twenty four. Let's hard code it for the moment. So I think that this one should run it only once. Am I? Right with that. Am I right with that? Like it should run it only once for each entity. Right, but what's interesting, we need a bind group here, so why not compute the bind group like straight up here? I guess it's easier to do it like this, prepare bind group. Okay, I hate this one. But it is what it is, I saw that also that guy made it like this. And you know, like some kind of library would be really good, like a wrapper around uh, this stuff would be extremely good but you know whatever like here we create the plugin let's see if it runs if it runs first of all if anything happens
Okay, looks like not really. the module it makes sense to me we that we add this chunk compute data right so it's like hmm it's like okay we have this chunk compute data I want to have in this image the the generated noise and this is p this is like offsetting the noise that's all that we have to think about here probably in the future we have like buffer instead of this and i don't know how we are gonna do that but maybe that uh, something that makes sense Okay, and then in this thing we have the plugin which just adds the chunk node, right? Whatever this shit does. Then we have the chunk compute data, which is just what I said. Right. We know how to create one. We have this chunk compute data bind group. Now it it doesn't need to be just the binding group we can also add like this thing the image size now we can add all sorts of stuff into it so just to make our life easier so imagine that this is the input to our uh, pipeline so anyone can send in the texture and the offset and this is the internal a representation of that data so obviously it needs like a bind group right but wouldn't be useful if we also have size which is going to be a uvec tool right like the size of the image of the texture of the whatever maybe like even coordinate just for printing purposes but yeah sure whatever called ivec2 so in here when we insert it let's say we actually do stuff like group is equal to bind group is gonna be is what view dot size I don't know if this is, says it's a field so and chord is gonna be chunk dot chord right what I'm thinking and it's so weird a size of an image is vec I mean it's even bad <laughs> what I said but it's uvec dead Okay, I mean if u32 view dot size dot uh, y as u32 like come on okay anyway so that's how I imagine 
Gaussian compute data buying group, right? Like it has all of this useful internal information that we get from our exposed chunk compute data. Then we initialize it, right? We take the entity that contains this chunk compute data and we replace chunk compute data with this. Huh, now it's interesting. Like we don't even need to use the same entity, but maybe it's just easier. Like let's not create entities for no reason or something like that. So yeah, we, we just create this entity. And we remove chunk compute data. So we are not gonna call prepare bind loop again. It was called only once. Because I think that we only need to call the init function once. That's our goal here. Like we have an init pipeline. Okay. So then we do our pipeline. We load the shader and we say the init pipeline is the init method. So shader, we can actually remove this one. So now we have this, right? This is our compute shader. Makes sense. Makes sense to me. We return this. Simple enough. We have like the bind group layout that we take from this. Makes sense. Right, it's just like the template. And this is the value for that template, pretty much. Yeah, texture view and info. okay. So then we go ahead and implement our node. And I guess the node is gonna be part of the pipeline or what? Or like, no, the node is gonna be part of the render graph that's how it makes sense, right? And the pipeline is going to be used inside of the node. Makes more sense now? I, I mean, for me, it makes a bit more sense. So then we have this uh, render graph node, which is a trait. And I guess it's a trait, yeah. And we need to implement it for chunk node. So in update, okay, what was this chunk node? This chunk node contains a list or I guess it's a query state but it's a list trust me it's a list with all the compute data buying groups so with all of the things that we added here so this these guys the group the size the coordinates coordinates we are gonna use just for printing purposes but still using them so we have that list then in update, update is going to be called, I would assume, before run. Like, okay, before run. That's how it makes sense to me. So we have to do this stuff. Update archetypes. I would assume that it just evaluates this query state or some something stupid like that. So. I guess, who knows, then we do run and uh, basically a run is going to take in some stuff, it's also going to take in the graph itself, which is interesting, I guess it's just context, so, you know, we have inputs, outputs, also that way we can actually write to outputs. You know, that could be interesting. Could be interesting to think about if we want to write to outputs or some uh, some stuff like that. But then we have the render context and the world, right? So, what do we need? 
with our pipeline obviously which is a resource and the pipeline just has the reference to our compute shader and that's the only reason we need it maybe because of the layout group but that's gonna be the input to our compute shader so we take that pipeline and I guess pipeline cache I haven't seen it used right before. Oh, I guess, yeah, pipeline cache is gonna hold our compute shader, right? So maybe that's what it does. It holds our compute shader. And chunk pipeline is our uh, contains our ID of init pipeline, right? So in the init function, we created a pipeline and we put it in here, right? And now we take it from the cache using the ID that we created initially. So I guess that's the idea. This one can fail, right? So I guess it can fail if the pipeline is not ready yet. So if this is not ready yet, it can fail. All right. Makes, makes sense to me. It can fail. Then we have this uh, for loop over our entities over the chunks and we take the the data from them so here we need to pass the group and here we need to pass bind the bind group dot size dot x group dot size dot y right so that's how i would do it now since this can fail it's gonna be interesting right oh i haven't used cord i forgot to print them but again we place this okay i mean it's still lagging <laughs> Is lagging even worse, dude. Oh my god. Ah, well. Dude, I have no idea how people do efficient tiering generation, man. Like, it's. Like, this stuff, it's so scuffed. But, like, really if i click i would expect to see them only once right and that's what's happening oh what the fuck oh that's not good that's not good indeed why the fuck is it still uh, running huh let's let's think about it let's think why it's still running right well here we said with compute data bind group but we never removed it or anything so well that sucks okay so then maybe we shouldn't remove chunk compute data maybe it should have completed or not completed like the state that we just deleted right and how can we handle it nicely or maybe the bind group should have that state or maybe the bind group indeed 
that you have that state. Because thing is, here I don't think we can modify the world. It looks like it's immutable. So, damn it, 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 it means that the state was actually useful. The, the other thing would be done is going to be a boolean, right? So, like, done is going to be false, right? I, like, I have no fucking idea what to do. Man. It means that deleting the chunk, I mean, deleting the chunk compute data is not that smart. I might as well just say here, without chunk compute bind group, right? So without that, so we don't have to remove it. So if we don't have chunk compute data bind group, we create it. But we don't keep recreating it, uh, sort of speak. Right, we don't keep recreating it. That's the way to do it, I think. But I would still keep some stuff in this. Hash map was actually good. Let's uh, funnily enough, the hash map I think was good. So we're gonna have loading. Man. Like loading in it and done, right? Probably. So like, they still don't like that. Because I, Like it's what's uh, well the issue is that well I mean I have an, another idea let's flag these uh, these things with something like derive comp 
component so, uh, chunk compute init right so it needs init let's say so here we can actually say something like dot insert chunk compute init right so we add the init thing okay and the, here we need those chunks with bind loop and the chunk compute in it come on it's uh, like uh, this right with. so Basically, what I'm trying to say is you create this chunk compute data object, like entity, right? Then it comes into this prepare bind group. It sees that it's like this, so it will, and it also doesn't have a data bind group, so it has to prepare the bind group, right? So the element looks like this. So we add the bind group and also compute in it. So it's never gonna come inside here again because it's it has this thing initialized. That's good. Then pipeline doesn't matter. Node is gonna be interesting. We need all the chunks that have bind group and compute in it. So we just added these two things, so it's gonna come in here. And what we need to do is to remove this thing in update. So let's take the for loop from, uh, from here and hope that it works. So Query filtered, describe with chunk compute init. So we take all of the entities, I would call them, that require initialization. Makes sense to me. So world.entity let's pass in the entity and let's can I uh, damn it I cannot remove stuff yikes yikes Whoopsie doopsie, I mean... Uh, <laughs> trying, all, trying all the shit, but <laughs> nothing works. Oh no. Holy shit. I mean... Computing it. Let's do something else. Let's... Do like a boolean. Like, is it initialized or is it not initialized? But I. I 
I don't like that because I want to actually remove it oh but who said that I cannot mutate that right I would like to get a reference to chunk compute in it and let's unexpect it expect uh, what so let's have the init as reference or what or I just want to be able to mutate it some shit oh I'm world query mute entity mutable I need to say right entity mute okay finally oh my god remove yes oh, we can remove it Oh, that's good. Chunk computing. Get the fuck out of here. Yes. Oh. Huh. Well, let me tell you, I learned a small trick. I learned a small trick about that. What if I say that this? No, no, it doesn't work. Fuck. I guess the reason is that we are iterating over the array and. Uh, This borrows it as mutable, and this borrows it as immutable. Fuck. The, I mean, completely trash language, dude. Come on, I want to be able to remove stuff from something that I iterate. Yes, for each would that make sense? But doesn't because I mean either mute. But this is still. Uh, Entity world mutable like hmm. no, it's it's not gonna work because fuck because it's but I don't get why I need world here when I iterate. Huh. 
this can only be called for read-only queries c iter mutable for write queries I mean, No, but even if I say mute, like how can I actually do something interesting with with the entity? Like how how can I use it? But I just want to remove all of these things. Like how I did it here. Commands. So I had the for loop. Yeah, like the thing is, this iterator doesn't depend on commands. Right? So that's the only difference. Then what the... Can I have entities dot uh, length? size for each and interestingly enough it still needs the world So let's do this. Jesus. So saying it here like false and can I I mean insert It's still not gonna fucking work, like holy shit. Here I have a hash map, so maybe it's worth. Well, what the fuck? No, help. Maybe it's worth having a hash map locally here and then doing something with it. Okay, let's do that. Let's let's have a hash map. So no, let's actually have a vec. What the fuck? Let t t. Like let remove entities is equal to a new vec, right? Like this. And how about here saying remove entities dot push entity. Blah blah blah. It has to be no. Here it's mutable. Happy with that. Remove chunk compute it. And then for remove entities dot iter <laughs> trick that <laughs> rust my ass dead. Come on, I we trick that bitch. We actually managed to trick the bottom checker. I mean, obviously, it makes sense, right? Usually, when you want to delete from an array or uh, modify, I mean, when you want to delete stuff, like, see, like this, I, I, did, I didn't really like that because we just 
modify the elements we don't remove them right usually when you want to remove from an array you cannot remove items while you iterate it because you mess up with the for each order right uh, like you can do it in the reverse order that works but uh, usually you create like a temporary buffer with elements that you want to modify you add them and then you actually do that so anyway enough rambling about uh, rust and let's let's see so this should actually execute only once now for real it's uh it didn't even do once that's even better and that's because i think we first need to update the archetypes no errors it's always scary when you move code in around because you never know so still doesn't work that's pretty not it's not cool at all the fuck i mean it's still working if i don't remove the init right yeah but it's running on each frame Okay, so update archetypes is actually useless. I was I was tricked into thinking that it's useful. No, I thought that it's gonna give us the entities that we have to update. Well, I guess uh, we can do that. We can have a queue of things that we need to update in the chunk node. So, uh, chunks, instead of being this crap of a query, how about it being a vec of entities? How about it being a vec of freaking entities? So, just like this. And here is going to be a vec, like a new vec. So, it's like a queue, right? It's only this crap that's completely useless, right? And in here, let's say oh, I mean, we still need this, we still need to do this entire stuff because we never know. So, self dot chunks dot push entity right and here we just have to iterate or i guess in twitter uh doesn't work okay so we might as well just deref this okay i mean does this work question mark does this shit work doesn't work for fuck's sake because i have to also remove them at some point okay i mean it mm, actually actually serve dot chunks push mm, we can do that i mean yeah. so now 
because that was even you no know, adding oh so now it can become a default yes it can be default and we do this so default right so now we have a vec of entities here we take all the entities that have chunk compute in it we put them into the chunks and then we remove this attribute this component and then here we iterate only those that have the component or i guess that were added in the current frame so do it once right the fuck is it still doing it multiple times, man? So here we have this PBR mesh. See, it, it doesn't have that. Like, what's my mistake? Curious. Wait, no, it's. Oh yeah, it, it, it actually is. But what's the mistake? That's what I'm interested in. So. Like here we have prepare bind group. We look for chunk compute data without bind group if we have that we insert chunk compute in it in this thing so obviously this is called only once for each chunk compute data mm. But, um, yeah, like, Vego entities. So weird, right? Really, I didn't see any chunk compute units on the on the components. So like not working actually oh shit it's actually not working but this thing is clearly and I, I, I saw the bind group the fuck if I literally saw the bind group right Mm, not really. It's chunk compute data. Huh. Huh. So what these things are added 
wait where is it Piperban group oh I lost that is it like in some render world actually instead of no I mean that's so weird without chunk compute data bind group the actual fuck like we sh at least that one should be called only once And it's not so something's not working with this insert, but I mean it's working because we see it. The fuck, paper mango. Clearly, it works because we see it. So this doesn't help, right? That doesn't help. But how can I execute it once? actually might be the only way like to no longer do this kind of stuff so let's try it remove chunk I mean chunk compute data I, mean, I have literally have no other ideas so come on this is gonna be the good ones so without this init crap this clearly is going to be executed once. No. Okay, I mean. Let's say chunk computer data because it's not gonna do anything. Hopefully. But like it's still executing it. Holy shit. Yeah, I mean, honestly,
no idea how to do it. In this third generation part uh, really sucked to be honest. Like what I, I don't know how to do is how to run the compute shader once. It's really really complicated in this. Like sure it it allows you to do it like updates and stuff easily, right? But actually run it only once because that's what I actually need, right? Run it, run it once, we get the noise map and that's it. But, uh, yeah, like probably going back to the old CPU noise generation is the way to go. Even though that sucks because it's slow. But you know, at least that works and gives us the noise that we need. So, fuck. We might as well just go back to that. And, uh, yeah. Not sure how we are gonna do. Like displaying the noise because I don't like to build the image that fucking sucks. Mm. Like probably with a simple shader somehow, and we use. in the noise map as some kind of texture I don't know but yeah I mean fuck might as well just go back to that right because clearly this doesn't go that well and even if we were able to run the shader once like in this example we can do these buffers i mean it's like it 300 lines of code in an example that has to tell you something about this not being ready to use Like clearly doing like compute shader should be something that takes you 15 lines like just putting the name of the compute shader putting the variables that you want and calling it and that's it like that's how it should be not all of this trash but I mean you know if you want to have uh, nodes and connect them together it makes sense to have something a bit more low level but it should somehow be simpler than this like just calling it once but i don't think it's a good idea to use uh, wgpu directly Yeah, like I don't know how to make it run only once. And that sucks. Prepare buying group. Yeah, literally no idea. Like maybe maybe one option would be 
with this, not this stuff. One option that I'm still willing to try is to do with a read back and we send back the computed stuff so we know that we can stop. That's another way to do it, right? Like we compute everything, we do the same stuff almost like, but you know, instead of using textures, I, I'll be using straight up buffers, like a 32 by 32 buffer or something for the noise map. I don't even know. I would like bigger noise maps, but Because, I mean, at least with this kind of stuff, uh, where is it? We should be able to have like nodes and edges between nodes. So maybe, you know, we can have a node that does computing the noise map then another node that maybe draws the noise map somehow but at the same time yeah like this clearly doesn't work because it doesn't make any sense Yeah, no, I don't think uh, I'm not going to continue with uh, compute shaders. It's it's not doesn't make sense. Like, sure, it would make sense if you actually want to compute something each frame. Now that I look at the graph, but we want to call it once, and that's it. We stop because we needed just the noise generation. So I'm not going to do this shit anymore. I'm just going to go back on the master branch and continue with what I have because this is not gonna work I like I don't see the point to be honest like sure in the example of here with game of life no, it works because it's it needs computation each frame, but for us we only need one computation. So, you no, know, maybe WGPU. No, I mean, yeah, it is what it is. This thing looks looked promising, but it's not uh, gonna work, right? Uniform staging, whatever, add pass, and then one shot build, and then you can call execute. But seems like. This doesn't work. 
like it's migrated on 0 0.12 Zero twelve dot one. Right. I mean, it's bit. Uh, it sucks a bit because you know, maybe this could have been good. But yeah, I mean, I you know, like we have to do more features. We cannot stop on the tier generation this much. Like, I don't know. I'll, maybe I'll just go back to generating the noise on the CPU just so that we have the noise map and it is what it is, we just go with the slow version just because we can make progress sometimes we have to do that but I guess that's <laughs> that might be the only way to go about it I mean, it's sad because uh, we would lose all of this progress. I mean, useless. Huh. I like this. Would have been nice if it uh, worked. It has some peers, but huh. I mean, funny enough. Funnily enough, you know, I would, <laughs> we might as well, you know, try this one. I don't know, we'll see, I mean, probably just go back to generating it on the CPU and uh, try to get some more stuff done because otherwise we'll uh, be forever stuck on the shader phase, so yeah, uh, let's see in the next one.